So for the past 22 years, Wayne has steadily developed, and the number of individuals and families that have been assisted by Wayne have now become the legion. Hear now the word of the Lord. But she saw this, this man, and he had a small little coat on, and he just looked like he was in need of a lot of help. She thought, you know, he must be cold and hungry. So she didn't know what to do, so she went home, and she started to knit. And she made these scarves, and she said, maybe they can be used for somebody. So before you know it, I had this package here for you to take to Wayne, and she's got another package for me to take to the soup kitchen. That is so precious. Is she knitting so, any more? Um, well, you know, you know my aunt. Once she gets a bee in her bonnet, there's going to be a lot more to come. I wish I could knit. All right, Mom, let me help you out. You know how you told Grace that if she never started practicing her violin, that she wouldn't be able to play all the songs she can play now? This is the same thing. You feel despair over how many people need help. You feel stuck because you can't help them all. This is just like the violin. You need to start with what you know and what you can do. You don't have to be able to do it all in the beginning like you just told Grace. You always say you'll feel better if you just get started and action pushes back despair. You should take your own advice. Wow. Who was that person and what did she do with my child? Uh, she must take after your husband. to meet our neighbors' needs with dignity and respect. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of this day and for this opportunity to come together as the community of Wyndham comes 
and shares the many gifts and blessings which you have given to each of us. We thank you especially for the desires of our hearts, the work of our hands, and the motivation of our feet as we look forward to this afternoon's walk. Feed the hungry. Give drink to those who thirst. Shelter the stranger. Clothe the naked. Visit the sick. Bury the dead. Minister to the prisoner. Well, minister to the prisoner, now there's one that resonates deeply for me. We are, all of us, damaged angels. Those of us who can leave the prison after a two-hour visit and those of us who cannot. Those of us who eat at the Covenant Soup Kitchen and those of us who cook and serve there. Those of us who take what we need from the Wayne storehouse and those of us who give to Wayne what we really didn't need in the first place. Those of us who, on a cold winter night, take shelter at the no-freeze center or the Holy Family shelter and those of us who manage and maintain these refuges. We are not either and or. We are not have and have not. We are one another, connected hand to hand to hand by our collective humanity. And so for this coming holiday season and for all the seasons that follow it, May we heed the wise counsel of Isaiah by preaching the good news to the poor, by binding up the brokenhearted, and by providing a release from darkness for those who live in prisons of their own or others' making. And as we do so, we will test our own still wet wings, tentatively at first, and then with greater and greater authority. And as that happens, we will rise above the concrete and razor wire of our own shortcomings and sins. Our shackles will loosen and fall. Our perspective will change. We will fly away. Our faith and religious heritages, our food and shelter, 